We'd move on to the next one by Calvin Burley, um, Industrializing Blackmail Privacy Invasion Based IoT. Okay, uh, hi everybody. Uh, we will be going over the industrialization of blackmail or privacy invasion based IoT ransomware. Uh, just going to leap uh, right into the background. The Internet of Things, or IoT for short, is a collection of smart devices that are capable of communicating over the internet. They can be used for many different purposes in different industries and be steadily growing in popularity. Currently, attackers that hijack IoT devices typically use them to perform DDoS attacks or, in very rare cases, uh, mine cryptocurrency. Ransomware, uh, on the other hand, in general, is a type of ransomware that restricts victims' access to their resources unless a payment is made. While ransomware has not been fully realized in IoT devices, it could potentially be used in the future. When investigating IoT-based ransomware, it became apparent that previous ransomware types would not be easily applicable to IoT devices. For example, the uh, lack of valuable files stored on IoT devices can limit the effectiveness of crypto ransomware, while the relatively cheap price of most IoT devices would limit the value of locker-based ransomware. Uh, neither type is ideal for application on IoT devices, and therefore attackers may believe that a different approach would be required for ransomware to be applicable. A relatively recent technique used by traditional ransomware operations is instead of, uh, in addition to encrypting valuable data, uh, is to steal sensitive information, then threaten to publicly leak it if a ransomware is not paid. This is typically used against high profile companies for confidential uh, or embarrassing data that could be severely damaging uh, if made public. So the question is, could this type of attack be used to target IoT devices? As leaking data becomes more commonly used as a ransomware technique, could it be uh, used in the IoT space? As part of this research, uh, we aim to explore this possibility, uh, provide proof of concepts, and identify possible countermeasures. Uh, this should allow us to get ahead of attackers and prepare for possible implementations before they occur. Our first step was to investigate the potential data sources provided by IoT devices that could be abused by attackers, including uh, internet activity, local configuration storage, and various IoT sensors that are traditionally used to monitor the environment and uh, interact with the user. IoT devices have been known to be hijacked uh, to invade the privacy of victims in the past. Uh, attackers have access cameras uh, unknowingly exposed to the internet, allowing them to uh, view video feeds within uh, homes, and in some cases, sell uh, encountered adult content to others. Uh, in one case, an attacker was able to hijack a Ring brand internet connected cap, uh, camera and use the speaker to insult and abuse uh, the victim's family, uh, threatening them with further harassment and demanding a ransom of 50 Bitcoin to regain control. These attacks, however, do seem to be uh, targeted or opportunistic. Attempting to extract private information in this way would require significant manual effort that would not scale well, especially when considering the scale of traditional IoT botnets. Uh, for large ransomware campaigns, it'd be infeasible for attackers to manually search through collected data for private information. Therefore, methods to automatically categorize and identify such information would be required. Uh, for raw data uh, collected from sensors, one approach is to use machine learning tools to classify uh, the input data, lowering the overall amount of manual labor required by the attacker. Here, we will discuss some of these methods and how they could be used by attackers. Uh, for images collected from IoT connected cameras, there are several machine learning models that could be used to identify ransomware images, such as theme and object recognition to determine the uh, likely value of extracted images, uh, face detection to detect occurrences of victims being caught within the frame of any collected images, or in some cases, even explicit content detection to detect compromising imagery that could later be used in a ransom note. Some IoT devices also utilize microphones to communicate with their users, or monitor their environment. This could potentially be used by attackers to eavesdrop on victims in the hope of intercepting private audio. If an attacker is able to intercept private conversations, they may be able to use a speech to text engine to automatically transcribe it, then search for valuable keywords that could be used as part of a ransomware attack. While these ideas could work in theory, uh, IoT devices do not typically have the resources to run machine learning processes locally or stored large amounts of collected data. Instead, attackers may be inclined to process, classify, and store collected data on a remote system. Using their own processing server would be one option, but this may not scale well as a large ransomware campaign may cause significant network strain. It may therefore become necessary to outsource processing to a third party, 
such as some online cloud services, which are more likely to be able to handle large amounts of traffic. In addition to extracting information from device sensors, attackers can also use the network capabilities of infected IoT devices to extract private information from victims. If an attacker infects a device that is able to intercept a victim's internet traffic, such as a router, they may be able to extract sensitive information. For example, domain names of visited websites can be extracted from DNS, HTTP, or HTTPS traffic and compared against a list of those associated with illegal or compromising activities. In the cases where the request is unencrypted, it may even be possible to extract information uh, about the content, such as video titles or personal information or account data. Less obvious sources of uh, data sources can also be used. An infected, uh, if an infected device has wireless capabilities, the attacker may, might be able to scan for nearby Wi-Fi signals. Online Wi-Fi positioning systems can then be used to determine the vi victim's approximate location. These methods could be used by attackers to extract private information uh, from various victims' IoT devices. However, the data must also be correctly managed for the ransom attack to be effective. During this research, we created a simple proof of concept collator, which would, be a, uh, which would allow an attacker to manage data collected from various compromised devices. First, we will discuss an abstract view of the attack structure before going a bit into more detail. The collector exposes an API which can be called from affected IoT devices to upload any obtained private data for processing, such as images, audio recording, or browsing data. Data points are associated with the calling device's MAC address as it's relatively easy to obtain and remains unique to each device, even throughout reboots. The data can then be locally processed, uh, can be processed locally on the collator or uploaded to online cloud services to identify any private information. Finally, uh, once adequate personal information has been collected, the device is disabled and a ransom note is generated to, generated to display to the victim. The ransom note must be sent to the victim in order to successfully extract payment. For typical ransomware attacks, ransom notes contain basic description as to what has occurred, a timer, or, and instructions for making a payment. For the invasion-based ransomware, in addition to this, can include private information collected during the infection as proof of compromise. By personalizing ransom notes in this manner, less technically aware victims may assume that the attack was a manual effort to target them specifically, which may further encourage payment. The ransom note could be displayed to the user by hijacking communication channels native to the device, such as by replacing web services or over attached screens on the IoT device. Alternatively, if contact information such as an email address has been previously extracted from the device, the attacker could send the ransom note directly. If the ransom is not paid, the attacker must then have a method to publish the victim's public private information. The method currently used by traditional ransomware is to utilize a centralized leaking platform in which victims that do not pay have their private information published so a central website for anyone to view. As part of the ransom note, victims will be encouraged to visit the website uh, for further proof of compromise or to pay the ransom. This additionally means that new infections would act as advertising for the platform, further increasing the pressure on victims to make a payment as more people become aware of it. Direct publication could also be used, whereby the attacker would use previously gathered information to determine who would be most impacted by the data's release, such as friends or family. Social media could be, uh, could be used to determine those associated with the victim and then used as a distribution vector, such as with automated chat box, chatbots. During this work, to test the viability of privacy-based uh, privacy ransomware on IoT devices, we created a number of proof of concepts using a variety of IoT devices. As routers often act as a main gateway for internet traffic, we used a Netgear R6250 router to test the network-based privacy invasion techniques. Using a previously discovered command injection vulnerability, we were able to compromise the device and run custom codes to gain further information. Using executables native to the device, we were able to examine various configuration settings stored in the router's flash chip, including usernames, passwords, and emails uh, set using during the setup stages. To exploit the position of the device in the network, we also created a program to sniff local packets using the libpcap library and cross-compiled it to run on the router. Any packets passing through ports 80 or 443, those commonly associated with uh, browsing, would be intercepted such that the visited domains could be extracted and then compared against a hard-coded list. If a match was found, an API call was made to the collator, which would record the visited domain, a timestamp, and the device's MAC address. Finally, using techniques demonstrated in previous work, 
we were able to hijack the web server and redirect DNS requests such that the ransom note would be served to the victim whenever they attempted to browse to another other websites and connected to the router. Uh, the SIP T38G is an internet connected IP phone with a built in LCD screen. Initially, we intended to intercept audio from the device's attached microphone, but eventually settled with extracting audio from the device's network activity, as this would allow us to intercept both sides of any conversations that occurred. To do this, we use an open source tool named VoIPOM, which can extract and decode VoIP, uh, VoIP calls from raw, raw internet traffic. We downloaded the source code of this tool, then modified and configured it such that it would be able to run natively on the phone, intercepting any calls made. Unfortunately, the phone only had a collective 60 megabytes of space available across all partitions, preventing phone calls from being stored locally. To circumvent this issue, we hosted a network file system on the uh, Collator server, such that when calls were detected, they were transferred to a remote file system ready to be processed, bypassing any storage limitations of the device. After intercepting and extracting the audio of some test phone calls, we attempted multiple different methods to transcribe the held conversations. Initially, we attempted to use a machine learning model uh, provided by Mozilla DeepSpeech, which could be run locally on the collator. Unfortunately, uh, the phone sampled, uh, the sampled audio quality was quite low, uh, which the provider model did not support, leading to unsatisfactory uh, results. Uh, therefore, we instead tested on uh, we tested the use of various online cloud services. Both Google Cloud Services and IBM Watson yielded a much higher transcription accuracy, with the latter even providing a keyword identification service, which could be used to highlight particularly valuable audio. However, as the use of these services also incurs a cost that would need to be paid by the attacker, we also attempted converting and uploading the extracted audio to YouTube. After approximately 10 minutes, captions would be automatically added to the uploaded video, which could then be extracted via the website. While this is a bit of an inconvenient and unconventional method, this service is provided for free and could potentially allow an attacker to sidestep paying for service costs. Finally, uh, we were able to hijack the, attack, uh, the attached LCD screen to display a simple ransom note informing the victim that they had been infected with ransomware. Uh, the D-Link 932L is an internet connected camera that is vulnerable to a buffer overflow exploit. As this camera was intended to be used for home surveillance, we chose to use it to test the image-based privacy invasion techniques. We also found that it had wireless capabilities, which would allow the Wi-Fi positioning method to be attempted. After exploiting the camera, we found that it was possible to extract a snapshot from the camera when a certain URL was visited on the web server. We uploaded an application that would automatically save, encode, and transfer images uh, using this method to the collector via an API call. The collator would then use uh, Google Cloud Services to label recognized objects, uh, locations, and activities using theme detection. As shown above, the collator successfully stored and labeled various images that were extracted using the camera. While this is a relatively simplistic example, if required, other services such as face detection or explicit content detection could be implemented with very minimal changes. We also uploaded an application that would be able to scan the SSIDs and MAC addresses of nearby Wi-Fi access points. During uh, one of the test runs, the camera was able to detect three nearby access points. And upon uploading the information to Google Cloud Services, we were able to determine the device's location to within 15 meters. This information could potentially be added to the uh, produced ransom notes to further intimidate the victim. It should be noted that the accuracy of these locations can vary depending on the amount of uh, signals available and whether or not they have yet been added to the online services, but for the most part, we found that it was relatively accurate. There are a number of countermeasures that could be implemented by developers, cloud providers, or IoT device users to reduce the effectiveness of the discussed techniques. The use of privacy tools such as Tor or VPNs can prevent domain interception from occurring, but it is unreasonable to expect every user to use such services just in case a device on their domain is infected with malware. HTTPS can be used to encrypt the content of visited websites, but the attacker would still need uh, would still be able to extract the visited domain. Domain. Further protection could be implemented with uh, encrypted server name indication or ESNI, which can be used to encrypt the header of HTTPS requests to prevent the domain from being extracted from the initial handshake packets, as it's unencrypted during the first negotiation. Uh, Due to the limited processing power of IoT devices, as previously mentioned, ransomware authors may utilize cloud services for processing during large campaigns. 
Cloud providers may be able to detect such malicious uh, behavior by measuring various statistics, such as uh, excessive privacy related function calls, which would imply um, potential malicious behavior, or the use of trial account, uh, mass trial accounts to avoid payment. Once an account has been identified as malicious, the account can, could either be banned to delay the operation of the malware campaign, or a more extreme approach would be to prevent certain accounts from accessing certain functionality associated with privacy-based ransomware until sufficient proof of identity is provided. Although this could, ironically, invade the privacy of prospective customers. Um, hi, Calvin. Hello. You've done 15 minutes, so you have five more minutes, which includes questions. So I, may, I would ask you to okay. kind of finish up. Uh, just a couple more slides, I believe. Uh, if a victim is threatened with a public release of their data, uh, there is little that can be done directly to reduce the impact. However, uh, it may be possible to reduce the overall trustworthiness of the stolen data. By providing large amounts of false data to the collator, the attacker would be able to waste time and resources to receive, process, and store it. If released, it could also reduce the uh, overall value of other data as it becomes impossible to differentiate real from fake data. This step is often suggested, but is worth reinforcing. Uh, by applying updates, patches, and changing the default password on IoT devices, the initial compromise and infection of the device can be prevented. It should be um, obvious by now, but you should do so as soon as you obtain or plug in any IoT device. In summary, uh, we investigated how IoT devices could be used to facilitate privacy invasion-based ransomware, identified various data sources commonly found on IoT devices and how they could be abused by attackers. We discussed various uh, possible privacy invasion methods, how private data could be identified, automatically collected and categorized, and provide multiple proof of concepts on a number of different IoT devices. We have finally discussed a uh, number of potential different countermeasures that could be implemented by users, developers, and cloud providers. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, thank you very much, Carbon. Um, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand so that I will mute you. But so then, um, Carbon, um, I, have a, I have one question. Is there, is there any instance of this kind of um, ransomware attack that has already happened? Oh. Uh, not that I am aware of. It, there was certain, uh, there was the occurrence which I mentioned uh, on slide four or so, which was the person who had individually hacked into the ring camera to uh, demand a ransom from the, a family. But this seemed to be more of a joke than anything else. The requested ransom was 50 bitcoins which at the time would have been about $400,000. It ended up with uh, the attacker being soundly defeated by simply unplugging the battery of the device. So I, I would say that currently, uh, privacy invasion based ransomware has not come into its own. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any questions from anyone? Okay, so um, I'd hand over now to um, the committee to end. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.